acceleration training, uh, a part of uh, the Interreg Alpine Space project titled uh, Circular 4.0. My name is Yuri Giacomelli. I've got a, a pleasure to uh, take you through uh, this uh, very interesting journey that we are um, starting today. Um, um, I would also like to uh, welcome and introduce my uh, colleagues, um, Jana Feirot and Sebastian Zizek, uh, who are here with us and are going to assist you and assist me in um, this uh, process. Um, a, a warm welcome to uh, Christian uh, Kleinhagen, uh, who joined in, uh, one of the speakers of uh, this program, who is going to uh, be our main speaker today. Hello, Christian. Very nice to see you. And I'm uh, particularly uh, flattered by the fact that many of you who have attended uh, the yesterday's uh, operators training course um, are uh, back here today. Um, we are awaiting quite a number of um, uh, registrants, and um, uh, we are very flattered that uh, the turnout uh, of uh, this pilot has been uh, so uh, high. Um, there are participants from across the Alpine space, there are participants from uh, the, uh, the neighborhood, uh, many of them from Slovenia, uh, some of them for, from other uh, uh, countries like uh, Greece uh, or Vesna from Japan. Uh, uh, I see some participants from uh, Turkey, etc. etc. So uh, it's really a pleasure seeing you. Um, all together uh, here with us. Um, well, we are uh, starting this uh, journey uh, together, which will uh, take us through um, uh, quite, quite, quite interesting uh, uh, st steps. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure, and uh, I would like to introduce this course right uh, now in, in, in a few minutes and give you a, a very brief uh, executive summary on some of the key points and aspects of uh, the circular economy before we dive into, uh, um, into the first topic uh, for real. Um, the uh, circularity acceleration training um, is a part of the circular 4.0, as you know, uh, an interreg uh, project which is co-financed by the R European Regional Development uh, Fund. Um, and um, in a few uh, words, I would like to uh, clarify what, what uh, the CAT 4.0 stands for and uh, to whom it is uh, primarily uh, intended. As you know, it's a plurimodular training course. Um, it is uh, primarily designed for SMEs to be delivered across the Alpine space. Of course, it's a, uh, becoming a um, public domain course, so anybody can uh, use it, um, and uh, also it can, it, there's no limits to uh, to to, um, uh, to disseminate it outside uh, the area of the alpine uh, space. Um, its main purpose uh, is to uh, facilitate uh, circular transformations of uh, SMEs. Um, where the course is focused on the redesign of uh, business models, uh, uh, passing from linear uh, to um, uh, circular uh, concepts uh, by the deployment and maturation uh, um, of the use of digital uh, technologies or technologies pertaining to uh, the um, uh, Industry 4.0 paradigm. Um, uh, there, it is um, um, uh, a particular um, uh, treat today uh, uh, because uh, this uh, in, initial part of the course has been facilitated also um, uh, by another uh, supporting uh, institution, uh, the Public Scholarship Development, Disability and Maintenance Fund of the Republic of uh, Slovenia. Uh, we are very thankful uh, for that. Uh, and um, uh, I would also like to uh, underline that uh, this pilot is a joint effort of uh, uh, two partners of, uh, uh, out of 11 of uh, this Interreg uh, project, uh, SRIPTOP, which is a part of uh, Josef Stefan Institute, uh, uh, an innovation alliance, a part of the Josef Stefan Institute, uh, and uh, the technology park uh, of Ljubljana, together with uh, the circular 
Business Academy um, hosting the uh, program. Um, many thanks again uh, to the uh, Slovenian uh, Scholarship Fund. Uh, all these uh, joint efforts uh, have made this uh, course possible uh, to be, uh, in, in particular, to be um, you know, free of charge and to, to be widely accessible uh, to you all. And I think it's really a unique opportunity, uh, maybe the only opportunity of this very kind. Um, uh, so um, I believe it's a pressure, uh, a precious moment for for all of us. Um, uh, so um, yeah, the main focus of the acceleration training um, uh, is, uh, is is twofold. We depart from the principle that every firm is a story of its own, and uh, secondly, we believe that uh, in the core of the uh, transformation, uh, there um, uh, there is a pilot project. A, clear a straightforward challenge that a company um, um, is embracing in order to make uh, the next step towards uh, circularity a, an open challenge uh, a step into the unknown which requires quite quite some courage uh, some some visionary courage and uh, of course some experimentation um, uh, each acceleration tr uh, training implementation however uh, is um, aims to uh, to attune to uh, the program um, to attune the program delivery to the needs of the SMEs in the respective environment. So we expect that several uh, uh, cut courses will be delivered in the future, and uh, the, the the overall design actually does not uh, prevent any further adaptations and uh, integrations into the um, uh, policy in instruments and initiatives. Um, uh, in uh, today, uh, we are quite uh, many. Uh, we welcome uh, representatives of SMEs among us. Um, almost 20 uh, or so uh, participants have uh, turned in with a clear idea, with a clear project they would like to follow, or at least a focus area they would like to follow, and where they would like to broaden their um, uh, circularity endeavors. Um, we are uh, here also. Uh, with um, participants of a parallel course, the operators, we are enabling the operators, representatives of intermediaries from across the Alpine space who are uh, going to deliver uh, the next editions of, of the CAT courses. And they are here either as observers or as, um, uh, or, or as full-fledged participants. It's up to them. And I will spend a couple of words more on, on that. Um, another important um, accent I would like to make at the very beginning is that uh, all, this course is um, uh, designed to uh, seize opportunities. We are looking for opportunities. We would like to abandon um, uh, from the very beginning, you know, any kind of um, uh, framing of uh, circularity, um, you know, as 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 a forced way out as something that that uh, uh, is actually um, a process um, uh, constraining uh, companies to comply uh, w w and uh, it, uh, that would actually be uh, compliance driven or, or, or regulation driven we are convinced that in uh, 2021 uh, cir circular um, uh, transformations are actually um, creating um, a bunch of opportunities and uh, we uh, should confidently em embrace um, this uh, thinking um, but of course it's a complex process and we will we will um, say something about it um, we know that nobody can get there uh, alone so uh, that's why uh, it's good to uh, to share experience and uh, uh, to share um, uh, to, to share challenges and um, and uh, learn from each other um, um, along uh, uh, the transformations that uh, we've been undertaking. Um, a few more words of, about the course organization. Obviously, it's, it, uh, this is this pilot is held in English. It's a uh, model for for uh, other courses to come uh, that may not be uh, always held in, in in English. It's not a, a prerequisite. Um, more importantly, this uh, delivery is organized in a hybrid mode uh, using the online platform called uh, Talent LMS. Uh, all, every participant has received uh, credentials to access this platform. Um, and this is uh, coupled by uh, live sessions through Zoom, as, uh, like, like this one. 
Um, uh, so hopefully is, uh, in the near future, we will be out of the um, uh, crunch of the pandemic and we will be able to uh, meet in classrooms again. Uh, at, at this point, uh, such a hybrid organization is the, the only one possible, bringing also some advantages, you know, to be together from many places around the world. So uh, let's let's enjoy this what we can. Um, um, uh, participants uh, of this particular pilot, as I said, uh, are representatives of the uh, SMEs, but also the uh, participants of the OTC pilot they, that may decide to actually take a, a, an active role uh, or to stay uh, with us as observers. Uh, one, one little notion to the navigation. Uh, use the Talent LMS platform as the bedrock for your navigation through the course. There are some steps that you can um, complete uh, alone uh, or online uh, or and uh, by, by the use of uh, materials uh, that are uh, readily available um, uh, you are um, you're going to be uh, you're going to navigate to the course you know from one module to to, to another you will have to complete uh, the, uh, the necessary, the, the prescribed steps in one module before you will be allowed to pass to, to, to the next one and uh, use the, uh, the, um, the slide deck as the lead uh, material uh, from where you start uh, exploring uh, the next module. Um, it, it, it won't be difficult to find it. it it's going to be the material on, on top of the list. And uh, from uh, there, as soon as you reach, you know, this navigation uh, icons, uh, you, you, you will know that uh, right now you, you, you can pass to other um, documents available within a certain module. Um, and uh, you, you have to most probably you'll have to fulfill some of the tasks uh, in, in, in a form of homeworks or questionnaires that will lead you to, to, uh, to, to the next uh, uh, session or the next uh, module. Um, live sessions are also di directly accessible from the Talent LMS. Of course, uh, they will be um, scheduled in parallel and you, and you will be you will receive uh, the access links uh, uh, via email and also some, some other um, instructions whenever uh, necessary. Uh, we said that uh, the uh, that our aim is to structure uh, every uh, transformation, every you know endeavor uh, of yours around some very concrete challenges. You know, very concrete uh, uh, steps that you would like to make within your organizations, and these are uh, typically structured as projects. Uh, so, um, some, uh, some of you have some project in mind, maybe some of you have already been working on some, you know, breakthrough projects, some inno innovative projects that can uh, increase your uh, circularity. Um, uh, others may be thinking about it and may not be sure or, or are simply just uh, um, in, in, uh, being encouraged right now to to find the right uh, starting spot, and uh, that's uh, perfectly okay. Uh, but uh, but we so we would like to somehow uh, make uh, sure that everybody starts from uh, together from the same uh, starting uh, position, regardless of of the fact that you may have had the the, pro the project uh, when, when entering the room or not. And uh, if the answer is yes, uh, if you have one, uh, through this, then th through this course, you will uh, be uh, steered to, to design a, uh, um, a lean canvas of the project uh, and evaluate uh, benefits and uh, risks, linear and circular. Uh, nonetheless, uh, at the very end, you will also be uh, asked to uh, fill in the um, uh, circularity assessment score uh, with uh, your uh, new project um, uh, included in uh, the, the firm's uh, structure uh, in order to see whether you know uh, your perceived circularity um, will have increased uh, or, or, or not. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, you will make a presentation at the very end uh, uh, where you will also be asked to explain how the project results can actually uh, be exploited across the organization for new circular business development. 
and uh, your organizational uh, your organizational circular practices. Uh, the uh, presentations will come up at the at the last session. Uh, as uh, you are unexpectedly many, which is uh, of course a joy uh, uh, for all of us, uh, you will um, may you you may um, attend that uh, more than one session uh, will be needed uh, to complete all the presentations. We will um, come back to you um, uh, to, through the uh, the next sessions, um, and um, we will deliver more details about how this last. Uh, um, meeting will be organized if at this very moment you don't have you know a clearly structured project it's completely all right and in this case uh, we will help you examine your relevant area of opportunities uh, we will define the circular transformation uh, focus with you uh, in which you will be able to evalu uh, evaluate um, and uh, prioritize um, um, identified opportunities uh, and uh, evaluate their benefits uh, and, and risks. Again, taking uh, into account linear and uh, circular um, uh, risk aspects. Uh, and uh, at the very end, you will also present uh, project uh, briefs poten uh, of, of potential circulation of potential circular transformation projects. So we believe that you know once you will identify your focus area, you will have more than one idea, perhaps, of, of, of how, how to how to actually proceed with the circular um, uh, transformation. So, um, so that, that means that uh, a short presentation of uh, and uh, a conception presentation of these ideas in a form of project briefs would be very beneficial, and that will make up uh, for your presentation. Uh, in, in the last uh, step of uh, uh, this course. Um, uh, in the materials, you will um, be able to um, find a questionnaire that will uh, help you understand whether your project is a game changer. So there is a, uh, there, here you will have some help to uh, you know, identify whether the project you are working on or whether you're aiming at is really a, a game changer. This is particularly, of course, uh, um, useful for those who um, have replied to the uh, uh, yes to a, to a question whether there is a project already in place. Um, and I, I, I will leave this uh, with you. And of course, if, if, uh, if um, uh, your answer is no, then uh, we will look um, uh, for opportunities uh, in a structured way, you know, related to technology, society, or value-driven opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And we will uh, try to, to understand uh, what are the key questions uh, for you related to timing, resources, your actual positioning within the value chain uh, and uh, in, in the competitive environment. Uh, what is your current vision and values? Uh, you know, uh, how strong are the factors, how they inhibitor the structures and, and, and so on. And we will get back to, to, to these issues. Um, when it, uh, it comes to, to uh, schedule, um, this is our first session on the 17th of March. Uh, we will meet uh, three times uh, more in order to, to, to complete our journey. Um, uh, knowing that in parallel this week, we are also uh, hosting the uh, operators, the future operators, uh, who have been with us yesterday and uh, will, will, will complete their additional sessions uh, tomorrow. Uh, and they, they will also, uh, I mean, are part of uh, participants of, of uh, the CART, so they will also, uh, as you all, uh, continue in the, uh, the three uh, forthcoming uh, weeks with this very course. Uh, th th this is a, a more detailed schedule of our journey. Um, it is also available on uh, the CBA website. Uh, and um, the, uh, the today's uh, challenge uh, is to uh, acquaint you a little bit with uh, uh, the first uh, uh, of the of the two important tools that stress the uh, the focus of uh, circa 4.0 uh, which is the circularity assessment score so we will uh, ask you uh, to uh, make a homework um, uh, and ass make a set of assessment uh, at, at the point zero at the starting point of your company of the circularity um, uh, the, the stage of circularity of your company at this uh, very moment 
the next time we will speak a little bit more about uh, the uh, digitalization component uh, of um, uh, the, uh, the um, the second transformation in a form as an enabler or as a disrupting opportunity for you. Uh, but uh, the most of the time we will uh, 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 dedicate to the understanding of the process of business model uh, transformation. Um, that will be uh, in uh, the main uh, focus of the day. And uh, are there any questions at this point, ladies and gentlemen? It's very simple to, uh, you know, we would like to encourage you to be as uh, open as, as possible. It's completely fine if you want to uh, keep your cameras uh, on all the time. And whenever you have a question, don't hesitate to uh, raise your hand and, and, and speak up or write uh, the question down to, uh, to the chat box. Um, uh, one of us will, uh, will certainly reach uh, out and uh, try to provide you with uh, a, a plausible um, reply. Um, so uh, if there are any questions at the, this um, early stage, uh, yeah, you're most welcome. Uh, I will um, proceed with a really uh, with an executive summary of, 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 of the circular economy. It's quite it's still quite a young topic. Um, concept of the circular economy stem back uh, a few decades. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, the holistic view of, of uh, the circular economy uh, has been uh, proliferating um, only in, 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 uh, through, through the last uh, years, perhaps less than, than a decade. Uh, and um, um, it, it's good to uh, stress some of the points so that we, we know, uh, we, uh, that, so that we, we build some common uh, ground. Uh, there's quite some more materials uh, um, uh, on, on Talent LMS platform that will uh, help you broaden um, uh, the um, conceptual uh, knowledge of uh, the circular economy um, as such. And here I would just like to to uh, make a reference you know, of what the circular economy actually, uh, uh, how the transition to the circular economy can um, resolve some of the planetary challenges that we are, uh, have all been facing. And um, furthermore, I would like to um, spend a few words um, um, talking about the, the corporate or the business level of, uh, of this uh, challenge. Because as we know, the, the transition to a more sustainable um, um, economic uh, uh, model is, uh, is pluridimensional and, um, uh, and uh, certainly the circular economy can uh, be the, uh, can be its uh, essential ingredient. Uh, when talking about uh, planetary challenges, we often, you know, we, we sometimes we interchange some of the terms. We say uh, that uh, we have to do more for the greening of, of our uh, economies and our businesses. We have to do something, you know, to make them more sustainable. From time to time, we, um, we uh, emphasize the word resilient, especially during the pandemic. We, we use the word resilient as, you know, uh, as uh, it came up as a striking necessity um, against an unprecedented crisis. Um, however, wh whenever we talk about the, the planetary um, uh, challenge, the, the most universal uh, planetary challenge, we uh, firstly think of um, uh, the climate change and uh, the excessive uh, CO2 emissions, which are uh, a consequence of uh, the um, uh, excessive in industrialization and the exhaustion of um, uh, planetary resources. So how, how can, what can we do about that, actually? Uh, I would like to introduce you the term uh, decoupling. Um, um, decoup the, the term of decoupling uh, um, between the advancement of human well-being um, um, and the economic growth from uh, the use of uh, planetary resources. The um, uh, the pressure, of course, increases uh, on, on or the pressure on the planetary resources increases with the growth of, of the population. Not every country is in the same in the same uh, situation as we know. 
just look at Japan on, on the right, for example, and many European countries look quite like Japan uh, when it comes to the uh, demographic uh, pyramid. Um, we, uh, the most of the world population forecast still leads to uh, uh, over 9 uh, billion uh, uh, people uh, living on the planet at the end of the uh, of this uh, century, even though some uh, recent um, ones uh, actually challenge this uh, forecast, uh, saying that it might be some somewhat less. Uh, it is definitely a, an important uh, factor, and one of the consequences is a um, an, an unprecedented uh, uh, process of uh, global warming, which is leading to a very dangerous uh, levels that can virtually um, make uh, the planet unlivable, as we know. Uh, from the risk perspective, um, if you look at this uh, graph, you know, uh, showing uh, the uh, likelihood and the impact of some uh, disastrous uh, e events, let's say that, you know, the, the insurers particularly like to understand, uh, you know, what, what is happening here. Are, are disastrous events uh, increasing uh, in their number? or in their likelihood, are they increasing in their impact? And uh, we see that those who have the highest like likelihood and uh, the uh, strongest impact somehow relate, in the most cases, they relate to uh, the, uh, the resource um, crisis. Uh, you know, being uh, extreme weather events, natural disasters, water crisis, uh, failure of uh, cl uh, climate change mitigation or adaptation, uh, the loss of biodiversity, uh, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, this is actually an old uh, picture, but things can have only exacerbated uh, uh, ever since. And uh, the humanity is obviously quite, quite, still quite outside the area of uh, the sustainable development, which is the quadrant on the bottom right. Um, we, we see a development path of the uh, most of the world's uh, countries. The European countries are, um, um, are signed with a red, um, with a red um, uh, ring. Uh, and uh, you see that the most populated countries are only coming up and joining uh, the, the most developed ones in the upper right uh, quadrant where the, the ecological footprint is the strongest. And uh, so uh, basically the development part goes right up and then we try to push, push you know, these countries down. However, it, uh, uh, if, if we want to reach more sustainable um, uh, ways uh, of uh, living together, uh, flattening this, this uh, development part would, uh, is, is uh, uh, a precondition. Uh, so, um, uh, in this uh, context, the, the decoupling, uh, the ability of an economy to grow without a proportional increase in, in, in the use of uh, primary materials and energy becomes uh, an absolute necessity. And the circular economy is in the core of the solution uh, for that. Some solutions can, can also come uh, simply uh, by uh, new technologies that can that don't really require a substantial change in the way how we produce or consume, but uh, simply replace uh, the uh, 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 the uh, the unsustainable ways of uh, you know producing energy with with um, more, more more sustainable ones. Uh, there are two aspects of decoupling: uh, resource and the impact decoupling. The first the first part uh, means you know decoupling in relative terms. It means lagging. Uh, of the use of resources uh, in comparison to the um, growth of the of our economies and the human well-being. In the long term, the solution, uh, um, um, the only acceptable solution, is, is actually the one uh, that we call the impact decoupling. What means that once we try, we, we achieve a level where the uh, the, uh, the the environmental impact will be actually positive. Uh, with the incremental impact will be positive with the incremental growth of uh, human well-being and uh, the growth of economic activity, then of course uh, the situation will, uh, uh, will be reversed. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of innovation uh, needed in order to get there. Uh, uh, we, um, 
a lot of innovation, even with the because with the present uh, uh, technology uh, metrics, we still cannot achieve uh, the uh, the total uh, uh, impact uh, decoupling. Uh, sometimes we uh, we also interchange uh, the notion of the concept of sustainability uh, represented with the global agreement on um, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Certainly the circular economy um, at least indirectly provides solutions to all 17 goals. Each of the 17 goals, as we know, uh, has got about 10 clear targets. So there are actually uh, nearly 180 ob clear uh, sustainable objectives that uh, countries decided to follow uh, and reach by uh, 2030. Uh, and um, some of them are directly addressed by, by, by the circular economy. So we are actually talking about a shift of paradigm, uh, a, trans a, a, a complex transition, uh, which it can be summarized in this beautiful uh, definition uh, provided by the Ellen MacArthur. It is, if you look at the European Commission's definition or the, the explanation of the circular economy, it's a bit longer. It's, I mean, it's, it says the same. It's a beautiful um, uh, description as well. So by, by saying this, I'm encouraging you to use um, uh, the EU resources just as well. But this is perhaps the, the, the shortest um, and more, the most concise one that I would like to, um, uh, to, to explain. When saying that we are shifting um, in, uh, to, to different economic model, we, uh, we say that we are looking beyond the current take, make and dispose, the extractive industrial model, right? That we have criticized before. Um, and and uh, we'd like to introduce um, and we'd like to see prevailing, uh, uh, we'd like to see a system uh, uh, prevailing that is restorative and regenerative by design. So by, by, its, uh, so by its concept or, or already. Uh, it's a system wide, uh, it, it requires a system wide innovation. Nobody can get there alone. No country, no business, no household. No, uh, uh, no, no economy uh, uh, as such. Uh, and it aims to redefine products and services to design the waste out. It means that uh, the durability uh, uh, the, uh, ha has to significantly increase and that we have to uh, distinguish uh, between ownership and, 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 and usability, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we've designed, by designing the waste out and uh, minimizing negative in impacts, this uh, transition is underpinned uh, by uh, re renewable energy uh, sources and uh, uh, builds upon economic, uh, means of other recognition of economic, natural and social capital. So it, it builds upon uh, the uh, concept of sustainability, in other words. Uh, I think it's quite a lot in, in, in this uh, saying, so uh, that's why I would like to propose uh, uh, this, uh, th this definition. Uh, but we say that it's quite a complex challenge, right? It's, uh, uh, it's uh, an evolutionary, a multi-level uh, transformation uh, and we, uh, in, in, in very short, we use uh, the circular triangle to describe this complexity of the circular tra transition. Uh, at the moment, we uh, often cite uh, the circular economy's uh, circularity gap, um, a comprehensive uh, research that uh, is produced every year, uh, published every January, uh, saying that, uh, I mean, measuring, you know, um, resource flows uh, of the world's, uh, world's economy um, in order to um, assess uh, to what extent uh, these flows uh, are bound to uh, circular processes and to uh, what extent they are not. They are still uh, actually um, um, effects of uh, linear uh, processes. So, um, the, the last data uh, says that the world is less than 10 percent, is actually less than 9 percent circular. And uh, the, in the last years, uh, in, in the first years of, of, of these measurements, uh, the, um, the effects uh, have been slightly deteriorating. Um, obviously, it's, 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 it's quite a challenge. And uh, 
uh, we try to understand that there is a systemic aspect with that they, they, they here in this triangle is termed the circular economy. So there's a systemic um, um, aspect um, concerned with policies, with re regulatory um, you know, issues, with legislations, uh, with the global governance. There is a cultural aspect uh, just as important. Uh, we have to decide what is really appreciated in the society. Can and I should be appreciated if it is soon on the other side of the world creating a huge negative environmental aspect. Can we really appreciate uh, su such such a suit? Uh, and there's a, a, a transformative aspect uh, related to the level of businesses, um, a world of its own that uh, we are going to. Uh, to approach and uh, dive in uh, through this course. And uh, as we know, we spend a lot of time in our working environments. Uh, it's really important for our, our uh, identities. It's really important for um, uh, how we live our values. And, um, uh, in, and right there, um, we can uh, significantly contribute uh, to uh, the, the overall uh, to the overall uh, process of uh, transition, uh, we said that the innovation was an, uh, an imperative, and uh, we also have to recognize that this is the end of the growth as we as we know it. Perhaps the, this pandemic, in many ways, has been uh, uh, has been uh, saying uh, that uh, that. Uh, uh, has been telling us that we may be a little bit too, too. Uh, I mean, it, it's 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 uh, teaching us that uh, this could be uh, really so. Uh, I'm not going to to uh, spend too much time on on, on some of the other details. Uh, you know, designing the waste out means that you know recycling is at a very low level um, and uh, of uh, circularity. And uh, there are a number of um, there are a number of uh, ways how companies can approach uh, uh, strategies and uh, to to change their business models. Uh, typically, uh, you know, going from uh, following from, uh, uh, strategies of narrowing, closing, and slowing loops. I'm sure that uh, our next speaker is going to spend a lot of, uh, I mean, a, lo a lot of, uh, uh, put a lot of accent on, on this. So I would not like to uh, deter um, uh, you from, uh, from uh, his um, um, speech. And um, uh, th this actually leads us to, to the, um, uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, the understanding of the importance of business models in the whole framework, uh, which are uh, uh, in, in the focus of our, of our attention, because what we are saying is that uh, the transition should uh, happen at the level of uh, business models in, in this whole uh, uh, course, business models are, are the um, the object of our elaboration uh, and the a business model is a forward-looking concept right so it's uh, it's quite an interesting uh, per perspective that, that that we are taking it's not accounting it's forward-looking uh, 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 this uh, has brought me to, to to the point when i can introduce uh, christian kleinhagen um, here with us who's going to uh, broaden uh, the uh, the perspective on a business model uh, transformation. Um, Christian is uh, innovation uh, strategies and one of the founders of uh, InnoBoost. Um, uh, he, his, uh, he was executive director of uh, the Circle uh, Economy, uh, uh, the advisory that I have uh, cited before, uh, and uh, he also worked with. Uh, a number of uh, large corporates, including um, uh, Royal Philips and uh, Tata. Um, uh, he, he's been Tata Steel, and uh, he, um, he's been in consultancy for a number of years. Um, um, and uh, he is also the co-author of a book uh, titled uh, "Circular Business: Collaborate and Circulate." 
uh, one of the main texts that we are suggesting for this uh, course. Um, apart, uh, this is the only text that is actually available only in physical form, so you can uh, actually turn to, to us uh, or, or to Innovus to, to receive a copy. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that Christian will uh, help you interpret uh, the, the juice of uh, the uh, approach uh, that this book uh, uh, contains. Without any uh, further ado, I, I am going to uh, pass uh, the word on, on Christian now. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Um, if there's a burning question, you're always, uh, of course, welcome to... Uh, to um, um, uh, address one. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, now uh, pass the words on Christian. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Yuri, for um, introducing me and uh, and also for inviting me. Um, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, with so many people. Uh, and uh, especially online, it's uh, sometimes uh, not very energetic and uh, inspiring. So I hope I get you uh, in the action mode. Um, so I would like to talk um, about circular business model transformation, uh, some opportunities, but also um, trigger you on the awareness on um, how, what are risks and um, uh, what are investments and uh, how to mitigate and validate the risk, of course. So I am part of uh, InnoBoost. It's a collective of innovation professionals. Um, and our aim is to create a profit to be proud of. Uh, we're located in the Netherlands and uh, in Asia. And uh, the first question, of course, um, is can you imagine the future? Yeah, what would be your North Star? How do you see personally, but also uh, from your organization point of view, the future? And uh, the next question would be, uh, if you envision that future, that bright future, uh, what do you need to innovate? And where are you today and where would you like to go? And which uh, journey would you like to take? And I would like to invite you from a um, perspective to put uh, people, the natural environment and um, planets uh, at the heart of your innovation. So maybe try it a little bit uh, different than you used to but let's what if you start there what would that mean for you what would that mean for your organization and uh, we believe and fortunately also already many others that um, a business can be a force for good so i would like to um, take you through a few uh, through an approach uh, that was created um, and, and described in the book circular business uh, that's already five years ago meanwhile uh, we uh, published and also, also together with my colleague Shian and Nancy Bokken from the University of Maastricht uh, different articles um, based on real practice um, so it's not only uh, conceptual or theory or what you're seeing, it's based on uh, the typical uh, steps or elements that, um, that organizations tend to, to go through. Uh, so we tested this framework on one side on small um, startups and on the other side in um, medium uh, sized companies and larger corporates as well. What I'm going to present is unfortunately not a cookbook. Um, it's not that simple that you're just following 10 steps and um, you have your circular business. Uh, first of all, it's an iterative approach. Uh, you can start everywhere and what you will see that you will go back and forward between those, uh, what let's call them steps. And um, what you also should uh, realize is that um, it's a learning exercise. There's no one linear way. Um, so we're learning and also understanding what's happening and further improving. I will show you also how. But first, let's, uh, let's go very quickly through the 10 steps. Uh, the book is also available uh, digitally in PDF. Um, and I will leave my email if you're interested. It's just a frame. Um, 
let's let's start with leadership it's important to realize in your organization uh, who is triggering who is now asking uh, for a circular economy and this question how do you envision the future somewhere somebody should uh, take the lead there and this um, this could be um, very classical top down uh, like uh, somebody heading the organization but what we see in practice it very often also happens in different functions and roles and uh, departments of the organization both in the profit context as the non-profit context after that uh, so people should take their responsibility and stand up and and um, also trigger awareness of course then we get to the the phase of uh, creating a vision and a purpose and that's very important it's important that with your organization you express uh, internally, but of course, also later on externally, where you're heading to. How do you want to embed circular economy or sustainability in your vision, in your ambition, but also in your strategy and translate it to uh, the operational daily work? And how are you going to measure that? Then we get the question, um, let's um, make something that is very big and ambitious to something that is very concrete and small and that's what's done in selecting your pilot and you also do it in this track it helps to uh, position it as a pilot it means something that is small that is not an official uh, big organization project yet with no targets but uh, with the aim to learn to jointly learn in the organization how it's working after that, you're going to sketch your system. So how does your whole value network, especially from the outside in, looks? Who do you need? Who are the stakeholders? Uh, who are the partners? Um, and what's needed to create value? Then you will have the same visioning and also uh, have sessions with your partners. Uh, do they join? Do they have the same ambition or part of the ambition? What are their values? What do they want to achieve? And after that's clear, the internal transformation is starting because it will have implications on your processes, on your governance, on your organization, or your capabilities, how people are going to work together, how you approach partners, things like that. That's internal transformation. Then the step, and that's where I would like to show today, um, it's the circular business model innovation. So how would the circular business model look like? What does it mean to capture value? Um, also to define value for different stakeholders. What are we going to earn? And what does it also mean um, if you look at uh, the, the next step, internalizing externality? So what does it mean for risk? What does it mean for things that you in a traditional uh, business would put push out of your uh, business model, uh, like a use of natural resources maybe, or impact on the society or things that are not financial measurable and risks that people don't like, how do you make sure that together with your par partners are going to internalize that? Then of course you get the formal uh, elements of contracting. What are you going to agree with your partners uh, externally, but also internally and different stakeholders, of course. And then you, almost have done the full circle um, and you could go back to your pilots, learn and maybe repeat elements of this and a certain of moment of time, it should be also viable and scalable, of course, for your organization. Then the question is, is the opportunity big enough? Is it feasible for us to step into that? And um, can we make it also actionable uh, for the next years to come? But what are the principles? Uh, because you could say uh, nine steps, 10 steps. You, um, I think it's important that you have a an, an mindset and that's what we very often see over the last 10 years, um, elements that uh, should recognize and, and also um, made explicit. There are three elements I would like to highlight. Uh, experimenting to de-risk. Um, what I call let it circle. So that's based on what's your circular business model and how to lead uh, to and scale together. So it's about had the collaboration and that's a key enabler to make this successful and to make real steps. 
Well, first, uh, we start with experiments to de-risk. So what do we mean is that? We all know um, that if we are talking about, and you already did, and, and system thinking and, and quite a radical innovation, especially if you see where we are today, uh, that means we have to make steps a little bit smaller. So big vision, but smart, uh, start small. And also let's try to experiment together in that. It's a learning uh, approach. For example, Royal Philips uh, Electronics did that. They had an uh, appliance called Lumea. Uh, it's a laser to remove um, hair. It's um, the target group uh, are uh, mainly women. And the question here was to go to a more circular or a sustainable business model. Uh, would people accept a refurbished product or used product? And, and especially a, a product that's close to your skin uh, has to do with hygiene. So how would that work? So what they did is instead of uh, pushing that to the markets, um, they uh, offered different uh, elements. So if you went into their uh, website, uh, then you could choose, or I would like to buy a new one, or um, can I try a, a refurbished one? And I pay a little bit per month. And if I really like it, I could take a subscription or at the end also buy this refurbished one. And this was a really win situation because a lot of products that were uh, returned to Philips, not because they were not good from a quality perspective, but more that people um, and just returned in their uh, two week, uh, weeks of thinking, maybe I don't need it or I don't like the package or a second thought. And normally that would be destroyed. So there we would already um, waste value immediately. And instead of wasting value immediately, it was taken back, refurbished, uh, did it really well and um, put in a subscription. And that's what we always recommend. Start with your most risky assumptions or hypothesis. If you start with a circular business model, look at um, have what you would like to try out, where you're not certain, where you have your whole discussion in your organization, and just try it for some periods of time and see what's happening, see what we can learn from that. And what you will see is um, very often it's different than you initially thought. And that's also what we saw at Mudjeans. Uh, Mudjeans, to give you con some context, is in the circular uh, jeans uh, company. Um, they already look at where the, how they uh, resource their materials. Um, and what they saw, and that was their question, how can we uh, enlarge the market? How do we get more customers uh, in a different business model? So how could we attract uh, customers that would be interested to uh, lease its uh, genes or subscribe on the genes instead of owning? Because they also want to take the genes back end of life or end of uh, the life as perceived by the customer. So what they did, again, an experiment, um, and it's called an A-B test, very easy and also not expensive. Um, put it online, uh, test two uh, directions, one where they said sustainability can be fun, and the other side was a subscription to community oh. with lifestyle tips and what they tried to do and measured is to see how many uh, people clicked on the A or one, how many clicked on B. And that's also the way how they tested this new business model and also could see if it would be a success to put that in the market. So two examples uh, for both examples and, and, and especially if you look at um, uh, bigger and more complex industries, uh, it's highly to recommend to work with partners, not only with your potential partners, but also to what we call um, co-create that. And that's also how this uh, bank did. Uh, AB and Ambro, they constructed a new office, a circular building. And um, when they wanted to uh, invite different elevator provider companies like Mitsubishi, they said, OK, this is our building. Um, please give us an offer, a spec, and then we see what we, um, uh, which um, uh, offer we liked. And, and what they thought was, okay, um, 
we want three elevators would be enough for the building. But what Mitch Bitch did was very interesting. They came back with an offer. They said, we are not going to sell these elevators, even not three elevators, but just two based on uh, the people we expect in your building. And uh, we are going to offer vertical movements. So that means that we are uh, keep be the owner of the elevators. We will make sure we maintain, service the elevators, including security 24 hours uh, if somebody's stuck in the elevator and end of life, or if you re uh, the, uh, construct or disassembly the whole building, we also take the elevator back. So again, an example of how to experiment, but also how you could shift to a circular business model. So this learning approach, we call it, always start with an ID. It could be your first circular ID. And then in that ID, you're looking at what are your biggest risks. And those risks you will test um, in uh, with an, uh, an experiment. And then, of course, reflect, learn, and improve. And this is going on and going on. So in the 10 steps I showed you, you will have this learning cycle uh, and then continuously. And this is um, uh, the big advantage of this is that will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. If you look at the transformation or innovation curve, you see that in the beginning of an uh, innovation transformation, your spend on something is quite small, but at the end that you really are going to launch a new uh, innovation uh, or at the end of the transformation, the costs are enormous high. So it would be good to reduce all risk before you launch. And that means also reducing uh, the euros um, spent and also the time spent. So again, uh, mitigating uncertainties and being wise on your investments. Then the second point, uh, let it circle. And um, therefore I took the, the value uh, hill circular business uh, strategy tool and um, what you see here on uh, one side, it's the linear um, economy already managed by Yuri had exists of ex extracting uh, natural resources, including energy. Then we're going to manufacturing, assembly something. We're going to sell something, for example, via retail or business to business. Uh, then we have an usage uh, phase. And at the end we say, okay, thank you very much, but we, uh, ditch it and, uh, and basically we destroy value. And what we are going to aim or would like to do with the, this uh, context is saying, okay, where could we add value in a way that we also are prepared for a circular design? Where can we optimize the usage uh, or at least make it longer, the use cycle? And at the end, uh, we are not going to destroy, but a try to retain value. So let's give um, me some uh, examples. So in the first phase, we call it circular design. In the usage phase, we call it uh, optimal use. And at the end, we call it value recovery. Uh, and on top of that, we have what we call network organization to um, direct everything. So I will give you some examples of how you could do that, uh, trigger you, but one side step, um, you're using the lean model, business model. This is a little bit similar, uh, but please keep this in, um, in your mind that you always uh, have your value proposition in the middle and that every time you're changing something, changing something in your revenue model or changing something in your activity like reverse logistics, that it's all um, connected. And it all means that it will change something in your organization, in your current business model. So this always means you have to consider what are the opportunities, what are the investments needed, and what are, of course, uh, at the end, uh, the revenues and risks. And then the question, is it worthwhile to uh, proceed. What's the big difference with a normal uh, business model um, that you're more looking at from an, a system perspective um, that you have to integrate uh, the triple bottom line, um, that you have to deal with multiple stakeholders. Yeah, I already mentioned society and the planet as a stakeholder, but also in a broader sense. And 
um, that would also uh, change your business model to in the middle of the value proposition, but also always looking at your uh, people and planet impact. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when I give you this example. Let's start with circular design. So what are uh, business models with regard to circular design? Um, you see here are some examples, also the, the, the bank, uh, IBM Amlo Circle, um, but you also have your court that is created an office from the government. So here we design an office uh, based on materials, but with in mind that at the end, we would like to uh, disassembly the building. And maybe we say, okay, uh, we, we take everything back. That means that we have to make sure that and, and take into account how we construct, how we uh, bring materials together. Um, also, how can we um, use the materials uh, that are, uh, or reuse the materials or recover materials and what's the value of all those materials and of course the traceability of those materials. So it's about really getting uh, long-term value retention. Um, this is an example of a headphone, uh, it's called Gerald Street. So they've designed their headphone uh, in a circular way. That means it's uh, based on different modules because they also learned that very often headphones are broken. So instead of throwing the whole uh, headphone away, uh, you can get different modules to make sure uh, that we extend the, uh, the uh, usage of the headphone. What they also added from a business model perspective is that they offer subscription. So they offer this subscription by paying, for example, uh, almost 10 euros a month or 750 a month. So you're adding also something else in your revenue model. Other example are mattresses. Um, Alping, it's a uh, mattress uh, brand uh, together with Niagara from DSM. Um, their question or the vision was, how can we both fulfill our sustainable ambitions? And what they uh, thought of is like, okay, we know that um, only in the Netherlands, 101 million mattresses are ditched in Europe, 35, and in the US, even 20 million. Um, so that's quite a lot. So what if you could uh, make sure that you design for circularity? So you're taking also mattresses back, but the mattresses are in first instance also fully made of used materials and and, uh, and renewable energy is uh, used as well. And this means that you really have to think through all materials and how uh, do they react if they disassemble, can they reuse? And what does it mean also, of course, with uh, mattresses uh, for cleanability, serviceability, reverse logistics, uh, and re-manufacturing of source. So again, looking at your business model, different aspects um, where you have uh, that you have to take into account. Other examples, this running shoe uh, on, it's a Swiss brand. Um, so they designed a shoe uh, that you will never own. So it's quite uh, interesting. You only uh, will pay for the usage. So let's say pay for the run. Uh, I don't think they even, they don't promise yet um, pay for the performance. Um, that you uh, achieve a marathon or something like that. It's interesting that they're using uh, castor beans. Um, so beans, um, natural uh, products already. So they think through, they use only fabrics. It's made of one piece, so they don't have waste. Uh, but also their revenue model is based on subscription and they uh, will take your uh, shoe back at the end. Now I would like to look at the optimal use. So how can we support better usage and products productivity as a business strategy, business model strategy? This is the example of Homey. Uh, it's a washing machine company um, and they really have a bigger um, aim, not just selling washing machines, but they would like to make the white good sectors more sustainable and prevent uh, waste of resources. They had to know that um, nowadays a lot of uh, white good supplies break down very quickly, are thrown away, a uh, lot of waste that they don't like. 
So their question is, how can we make sure uh, that households uh, are going to uh, longer use um, appliances? And what they did is very interesting. They introduced the pay per wash model. Um, and what they try to do is to in, um, influence your behavior by uh, giving you a big discount if you wash with a lower uh, energy or lower uh, temperature program. So you pay less for a 20 degrees program than for a 19 degrees program. Uh, what they also uh, help you with, they inform you and in saying, okay, you can better wash on certain uh, time slots because it's cheaper, better use of uh, energy in normal, and they always take the machine back at the end. You can imagine that on their roadmap, they are also designing um, for circularity. Yeah? So that's the, the first phase of the, the value hill. But this on itself is quite interesting. I also guess or assume you know this one, uh, lighting as a surface. Uh, so this airport doesn't own the lights, uh, they're only paying for the lux, uh, including the energy. So that's interesting. So um, the company that's delivering this, uh, Signify, uh, they really have to, uh, they installed sensors to make sure that they know uh, when they have to light, uh, the intensity of light, and things like that. And they are also responsible to, um, if they have new innovation, they will install it and take the lights back and make sure that they also design for circularity, but they also have a circular revenue model. Uh, total other category, uh, fashion, so really high fashion. So they have a an, uh, an business model where they say, okay, can we make sure that um, dresses that are used on the catwalk are loose or designer dresses are used uh, longer and by more uh, users. Um, so they installed a renting model and, and by this uh, at least 10 and maybe even 20 people are using and reusing like for this uh, baby clothes company as well. You have a subscription baby uh, clothes and it's very interesting because babies grow to small children. Uh, you don't have to throw your uh, children away or uh, children's yes, children clothes away. And then um, you get every time new pack, they wash it, repair it, make sure it's ready and send it to your parents um, who can use it. So again, example of optimal use to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we optimize um, products or services. And a good example, and there are many examples of this, is a, a sharing platform, uh, the sharing economy. Uh, peer by in this example, uh, there you can share, for example, uh, gardening tools or uh, drills. Uh, they know you only use drill a few times a year, so it's a waste, it's not used. It's, um, so why uh, don't you uh, uh, rent it to your neighbors or other people in the neighborhood? Then uh, the next strategy would be uh, capturing value um, after the use life. So then we are looking at uh, reuse, redistribution, refurbish, remanufacturing, and let's say the lowest value, uh, recycling. Again, an example in the fashion, uh, Finted, so a platform uh, where, for example, my daughters uh, buy their clothes. Uh, it's all secondhand, and uh, when they're done with it, they uh, sell it through. So you get a third or fourth or fifth hand. Um, and um, so it's quite interesting as well uh, for use to clothes. You can also uh, recover value, of course, by um, yeah, brands. Um, like Eco Alf or very uh, known brand uh, Patagonia, Patagonia, who's doing that all for many years, they uh, reuse uh, materials and they create uh, new value out of it. Same example of uh, uh, WWF, who has t shirts, they're taking back and reusing, reusing, and uh, worn it again, repair it again, wash again. So they close the cycle. If you really uh, go to a more the lowest level of um, getting your value, uh, 
recovered. It's, uh, for example, Nike did it already for years. Uh, so they take shoes back, they grind it, it's Nike grind, and uh, at the end, they also create uh, new shoes out of it. Then, uh, so I discussed circular design, optimal use, and value recovery. And uh, then overarching, you have the what we call the network organization. There you have different roles and recovery provider, uh, process designer, also value management and um, tracing management. So there are different roles um, that you can have there to make sure that you have in different phases and create different value and capture different value. Uh, GISPA, for example, did that. Um, they are uh, specialized in office furniture. Um, so what they created is out of old uh, cabinets, uh, they create this, uh, this beautiful um, um, furniture. And what they did is uh, it's made of recycled materials. It's also made from uh, foam uh, of uh, used mattresses. Uh, but what the message is here that they have a different role. So they, they're from, they moved from an, a manufacturer of furniture to more network organization. If you see, had a number of organizations that are facilitating to get this, uh, it's quite numerous. So it's quite an impact for them in terms of how, what are our capabilities, what's our role in the value chain, uh, what does that mean for our risks? Uh, but what does it also mean, let's say, in the core of our organization? What do we want to be at the end? Do we want to be in furniture manufacturing or are we going to facilitate uh, your office or now your home office? And what does that mean? Because then you could also add other uh, services like uh, lights and like uh, computers or other things that make an office uh, great for uh, employees. Then the last part, huh? that's all um, nice. You have chosen your business model, uh, but the question, who is going to do that? And um, already started huh, with leadership. Uh, it could be leadership. And here are three personas, Scott, Martijn and Roger. Scott is a product uh, designer. So he is really in the organization and busy with uh, trying to design new products. So he has to take care of uh, different stakeholders who are pushing him on costs um, uh, because design should. So he also has to look at some different materials and interact with manufacturing logistics, uh, but also with marketing and sales. Then you have somebody uh, like Martijn, he's running a family um, company. And for him, the dilemma is how do I make sure if I have a successful organization now and I want to leave it for future generations, how do I ensure uh, that if I make this transformation that things are not going the wrong way and going sour? So what do I have to do for that? Then you have Roger, uh, you could say in a type of a CEO or somebody um, in, an, uh, in a big uh, corporate or a big government organization. And um, he has, um, of course, a lot of problems uh, of stakeholders uh, who are shareholders who are saying, okay, what does it mean for the short-term finance? And what are you going to really see as an opportunity if we move to a circular business? Is this really worthwhile to transform? And how are we going to do that? And especially in this category, it's fair enough and very much financial driven. And the message here is, uh, the circular economy is worth, uh, I think the latest uh, numbers were a, a few trillion dollars. Um, and it's not about uh, that I want to get the uh, biggest pie. No, it's about how can we create the business opportunity together. So how am I going to do this with partners? How am I going to do this with uh, my whole industry, but also uh, with competitors, what I traditionally saw as competitors, but also outside uh, my system. And one handy tool I would like highlight here is the, fee, uh, the 5P model to give the start on leadership, especially in your organization. Uh, you can um, easily do it yourself. You start in the middle and your question would be, uh, 
um, what's your personal link with circular economy? Why do you think it's relevant, important? Then you can ask that uh, question for friends and family. And you go to the professional. So in your work context, what would that mean? What can I do there? Uh, then the next question would be the partners. How can I uh, create a circular business together with partners? And then of course the last uh, but not least question, what would be the impact on public and planet? Eh? What would be our environmental impact? Can we really uh, decouple uh, the material usage um, and energy usage of our growth to a new circular business uh, and also have an, a positive societal impact. It's uh, important to um, summarizing how to look, uh, first of all, where are you in, with your organization? Are you seeing this uh, circular economy still as a sort of risk, like we have to mitigate for uh, natural resources, scarcity or fluctuating prices? Are we going already for the next step, what I would call eco-efficiency? Um, or are we going already to transform to one of the circular business models uh, I showed you? And, um, and depending on where are you today and what's your ambition, you will see, okay, there's a certain gap and that gap should be um, closed uh, with your organization. And that's basically where you would take the 10 steps uh, while you're going to experiment and de-risk uh, while you're going. So summarizing, um, position yourself on this risk to opportunity map or the value hill. Uh, also position your value chain partners, identify where the gaps are uh, and formulate a future strategy to close that gaps um, and also how to capture the business opportunity together with your partners. And then of course, a plan to validate and mitigate uh, your risks. Uh, and I think then you can also answer uh, this question. Um, can you satisfy financial stakeholders, but also other stakeholders in the short and long term with all these things you have, of course, in your agenda uh, and won't go away. So uh, this is the end of the presentation and I'm very interested uh, to hear uh, what are your dilemmas um, and what's, uh, how, what could be for you uh, the next step. And of course, uh, it's time for uh, questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, questions are welcome. Um, it's uh, very simple. Uh, just raise your hand, uh, switch on your microphone and uh, uh, take the word. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to ask you, um, Christian, um, uh, how can you as a change agent in your organization, particularly when, uh, you know, it's another corporation that may uh, have a, uh, uh, foreseen, you know, uh, uh, places and structures uh, and, and, and uh, ways to, to promote uh, new ideas. Um, let's imagine uh, an SME, a mid-sized company, uh, always overwhelmed, always uh, um, with a particular lever upon uh, decision makers, yeah. um, bur burdened with uh, short-term um, issues rather than, than, than long-term views. Um, I mean, always the risk to uh, that the short-term um, issues overwhelm you. So how can you um, make room for experimentation and uh, make room and also show resources and time and focus for an experimental project? Yeah, I personally like, um, and, and also did it myself to um, have, have what I said, um, this very big and conceptual to make it very small. And there's always a way, uh, like I showed you in the example, we can always try it for a certain period. So of course, the first step is, otherwise you even don't have room um, or get room to, to experiment is that 
some key people should be convinced. So yeah. I assume that there is awareness also giving the huge pressure and uh, the people are, we, we don't have to argue with that. Mm -hmm. uh, if so, the, uh, that's, that's another chapter. Um, but uh, also financially, it's very interesting. Even if you're not saying I'm not a tree hugger or whatsoever, it's still very interested and in, and in where you should do. But giving uh, that would be then an, an, an assumption that uh, that's done, and I think it's good then to identify uh, where could we could we also find something to do a small pilot. Uh, what's anyhow because you always have a new product or service or something that. Um, that may be something that's on your roadmap, but try to connect to that to make it very concrete. So can we do something uh, in terms of uh, the value hill? Can we find something more on the materials? Uh, uh, can we design for it? Are we still in that phase? Or can we make, uh, maybe we already have something in the market, but then say, okay, how can we um, uh, and make sure that it's more optimal use? So can we do a small experiment there? And especially um, also by involving your customers and seeing uh, what would be interested for them. Uh, why is, for example, subscription not more interested in just buy it? Uh, and it could be interesting because then you also get a different customer relation. Uh, people, if you move to a circular business model, instead of a one-off transaction, suddenly I have more contact with you. I'm going to ask you, what did you think about subscription? You say, Oh, I uh, want more service. I like it because it's relaxed. It's more. So then, add, so it's also another way of interacting uh, with your customers. But my single advice is keep it very small. And especially in the beginning, uh, until you did some learning, because for sure, and I also did it, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, and have be open, what did you learn from that? What could you improve? And at a certain moment in time, if the pilot is relatively success, where you say, okay, there is an interesting uh, business opportunity. We can make an impact here. Uh, interesting for customers, but also interesting for us as a company, for an SMA. Then uh, the, you, you see people like successes, of course, and they will also want to be part very often of a future. Uh, if, it's, if it's also... Uh, inspiring enough of course yes. so, make it small uh, and inspiring make it small yeah. the risk uh, yeah. uh, so this means some focus but still uh, some sponsorship from the key people is essential yeah yeah uh, and uh, what about uh, uh, setting some expectations i mean uh, focus the, what about the focus and and, and the objective you also said there should be time constraint uh, the exposure should be time constrained uh, still, uh, let me insist on this. Uh, um, how how clear uh, do we want to be on the outcomes? Uh, yeah, that's a very is good it, one. Or, okay, is it uh, better to say, well, just let's let just play, or is it better to say, okay, this is what we expect from the project at the very end. This is like a minimal requirement at the very end. I think that's always good. Eh? Uh, start with assumptions from your key stakeholders, but everybody involved. Uh, what do you expect from it? Um, and uh, because it's not realistic to promise um, like huge yeah. trees or big uh, financials. Uh, so it's very important to, to get those uh, assumptions on the table. And that would be also the start of your experiment to, to validate one of the assumptions because you could be very strong in saying, okay, I cus our customers don't want, uh, very often I have to those discussions. They're not interested in sustainability circular. It's getting expensive. Uh, there are all kinds of things. It's a lot of investments, time. Okay, let's put it uh, down and let's try it. So I would be very realistic on the assumptions, not, not over promising. That's not fair. Also, because unfortunately, it's not like a linear route. Mm -hmm. So there, you will always go a few times like this and have a different scenario at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you been involved in situations where, where over promising led to the bounce back, let's say to the uh, disillusions? Uh, yeah, yes, um, uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, and most of the time, the, the overpromising is not on the result, but uh, uh, on the time and persistence. So you, you really have to be 
in that sense, if you're looking for change agents, uh, somebody who's really persistent and and yeah would like to go back and is not afraid of getting uh, some uh, things that are not uh, nice on his plate or her plate. Um, so the 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 uh, I think be realistic on the timing. And that's why uh, and a lean, like you're now using the lean canvas, the lean approach of, let's say, weeklies, very short mm -hmm. uh, interactions are much better than making big uh, project with big investment with a big expectation on the end result, financially or non-financially. Another uh, question um, that may uh, concern SMEs. Um, uh, quite often, um, SMEs are suppliers to yep. large corporations, yep. and uh, this puts them in a relatively uh, limited uh, uh, position within a value chain. Yep. Uh, they have to uh, comply with a number of uh, requirements in order to stay competitive um, uh, with uh, uh, regard to the expectations of, of their buyers, of their immediate buyers. Uh, and uh, th this limits uh, the uh, area of experimentation uh, and, and hopes for, for, for the future. Uh, how sh uh, should such companies who identify such a problem, uh, how can they um, you know, uh, resolve this problem either w in cooperation with the, the buyer, the corporation, or in uh, perhaps in a relation to um, the overall um, industrial dynamics. Uh, uh, how 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 can they actually make uh, make uh, re the experimentation relevant, even though yeah. uh, from the today's perspective it, it seems like everything is fixed. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's also something we will highlight next week on value proposition creation. Yeah. But the the key difference is that your value proposition in also situation like you're a sort of a supplier for a whole value chain, uh, from a one to one sort of relation that you're much more thinking in okay, uh, getting all your stakeholders around the table and looking. How can I create value for uh, Catherine and Zipla and Alice and Marsha and Spela and, and, and have that conversation? Okay, how am I creating value now for uh, Katerina? Uh, how would that be for the future? And then Katerina saying, yeah, but if you change your position, I have less margin, good. Okay, so we put less margin on the table. Uh, what does it mean? Um, so then we are going every time I'm making the circle of getting those people around say, oh, what do we want to have mm -hmm. in terms of financials and non-financials? And then you see also how what uh, value is captured, what value is destroyed, because uh, maybe I, uh, I destroy value of you or Werner. Um, and, and then you see at the end also what are joint value opportunities. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, it's, so it's for sure not an exercise that uh, somebody uh, what you won't do and uh, you already did it uh, said it in the introduction um the mindset should be that you're reaching out and co-creating this with value chain partners and even with people you wouldn't dare or wouldn't expect so that's a step a mental step you really have to take uh, as so if, if you still think in supplier customer relation and not in partner relation i think that's the first uh, one you have to take. Right. Uh, let me uh, make uh, the last call for uh, any questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, meanwhile, my, my last question would be, uh, what will we do next time, next week? I think Spela has a question. Oh, Spela, please. Uh, yes. Hello to everyone. Hello. Um, Hi, Spela. Thank you for the uh, very interesting uh, presentation. I have a question. Um, I come from an educational organization mm -hmm. um, and uh, can you give some examples or advice how to approach uh, circular transformation in our line of business um, as educators? And you mean education in uh, your um, students or? Yes, uh, higher education, um, but yeah. mostly for adults. Um, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I did this a few times. Um, I must say it's not easy. 
uh, in the beginning what I experienced because uh, especially if you want to get it in a curriculum, you know uh, that takes effort. So again, the head step will be making sure that uh, the people in your organization are also convinced that it's important for the students to learn about um, uh, circular economy and what does it mean for them uh, and how could and that they also see it as opportunity. And then it would be um, what we did in, in a higher, but also a little bit lower education or more practical, sorry, it's the wrong word. It's not about lower, it's about more pragmatic education is to um, also first do that in a small scale. So not suddenly change the whole curriculum, but do a sort of special class on it first uh, and see which. And the other thing is, I, I don't think it's circular, economy on itself is a topic that should be integrated. Uh, if you look at your current curriculum, the question is where could you find a link uh, to, I don't know, to science, to social uh, uh, behavior science, to I, I don't know what kind of education it is, the topic, but you always, it should be, it's a holistic topic. Um, so you find a lot of um, touch points on subjects you already have. So it's not changing the whole curriculum. It's looking how can you make it relevant related to that. But there, of course, there should be an overall vision of that. And there, uh, I can also link you to um, yeah, people there, because there are many examples of uh, schools that uh, universities and uh, that already did it successfully. And even now position this as a sort of something that is very special and that's attracting more students. Okay. Does yes, that thank answer you. your yeah. question, Spella? Um, yeah, yeah. Sort of. Uh, it would be great if you could share some some connections. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some... yeah. Okay. Thank you. So a, a part of the um, solution is um, uh, finding relevant uh, finding partners to whom uh, your uh, curriculum could could mean uh, an additional lever uh, to yeah. boost the clarity, right? Yeah, that but, could be one way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, apart from the cur curriculum, um, we actually have um, one program which is um, sustainable development oriented, but um, as an organization as a whole, uh, which other aspects of sustainability can we incorporate in, into our mm -hmm. business, not just curriculum wise or program wise? Also in your organization, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Also, in yeah, yeah. There are many opportunities. Have, for example, we have with schools. We we also uh, uh, had looked at how they use energy, how they use materials, how they use uh, our people coming. Uh, how are they, how, how is it related to mobility? How is it? Um, so all those topics are relevant and the more tangible because you can preach it, but if I don't do it, you don't believe me. And you know, especially with education, that should be 100% consistent. Uh, yeah. So a teacher cannot say this and do and throw things, uh, just the batteries in the environment or something. Yeah, ridiculous example, but you know what I mean. So that, exactly, that's yeah. why it's so important to engage with your, uh, with the teachers and, and see, okay, where do we want, what do we want to achieve and how can we make this concrete? Uh, both in our building or the learning environment, now it's online, as in um, at the, the subjects, of course. So it's a really the, the, the behavior uh, that is important here and the, the concrete touch points that makes it happen. Okay. And can they do Thank a you. special assignment, for example, eh? a thesis or mm -hmm. easy things that are anyway uh, uh, only by triggering or inspiring your uh, students and uh, teachers. Experimenting new ways of coming and yeah. to school and, uh, and, and yeah. going back and Try yeah. finding partners in that. That's very interesting. And also here it takes time, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Very well, um, Christian. We are looking forward to the next week. Um, I believe um, uh, value proposition will be uh, in in our focus. Yeah. Uh, which is the core of uh, of a business model canvas. Yeah. Uh, and um, I believe yeah. uh, there are any further questions. Are there? Yeah. Sandra. Sandra, please. Uh, it's really good, Shetty. 
I'm not sure whether Sandra is talking to us. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, anyhow. If Sandra doesn't have a question, I would have uh, one oh, short okay, question. Okay, Vesna, please. Hi, Christian. Hi, Vesna. Um, so, could you, I would really appreciate if you could explain more about the model on using the product. So you gave the example of shoes, which could be some sort of rented. So, and every month uh, the user pays the fee. So yeah. in that way, it's a very easy then to use the shoes for one month and then bring them back and take another new shoes. And so my question is, is it this uh, fee? Is it lower with the time you're using shoes or how to, avoid you know the the using the shoes for very short period of time before returning them yeah that's a very good uh, question fesna indeed uh, you really have to think that through that you're not stimulating uh, by uh, putting everything in subscription uh, and over usage so the question is, uh, uh, are you asking commitment for a certain periods of time? Are you giving indeed a discount if people are uh, reusing it? And there's also an important question, it's, uh, because leasing or subscription on itself is not sustainable. So it's very important also, do you look at the design phase and also the after usage phase? So that for sure you have to take into account that right? it's not only about uh, the subscription but you can stimulate people of course eh? like the example of homey uh, where you pay less with lower temperature is an interesting one if you want to try to influence the behavior of your of the people so that they're not returning every time okay so thank I, you Christian. yeah Very well. yeah um, but can I just mention, like, uh, if you wash at lower temperature, then uh, you also need a more uh, aggressive detergents. So in my case, in Japan, we cannot wash in higher lower temperatures than 40 degrees. But mm -hmm. if I want to wash something, I really need to use, a, like, if I want to get the dirt out, I need to use a aggressive uh, oh, detergent. Uh Okay, that's interesting because in the Netherlands, um, like uh, big brands uh, promote uh, even that their uh, uh, detergent is effective on low temperature and you, you shouldn't overdose or make it more increased. So that's maybe a cultural or a country difference indeed. But uh, it's very important what you're mentioning, eh, that you look at in the context. Also the examples I gave, are they relevant? And that's the next time we're talking about value proposition, that eh, it starts with user in the context. Uh, so Japan's uh, consumer is different than uh, a Slovenian or a, a Czech or an Italian user, of course. Uh, because uh, for example, for, for people in Indian, what I learned, or give me feedback, they said that it's fine to use secondhand baby clothes. Well, people, I did an experience in the Netherlands, people said, I don't, I only want new uh, baby clothes. So it's interesting that, that they react differently. They said some see it as a positive and some see it as a negative. Very well. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Spela and uh, Vesna, for uh, uh, this uh, debate. Uh, also, uh, Alex Spelt uh, uh, has shared a link to a similar concept um, uh, that time for t shirts, I think, or, or shirts. So you can also um, examine uh, th this, uh, this um, uh, case. Uh, I would like to thank you once more, Christian, uh, uh, for uh, your engagement and, and your uh, lecture um, and, and, and the debate that we have had. Uh, we are looking forward to meeting you again uh, next week. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to uh, complete this. Um, Excuse me, I have one more question. Giga yes. are here from Company Yes, yes. yes Giga, please. So Christian, over here, I have one more question. Now in our company received this ESO uh, 14,001 standard. Mm -hmm. and, they, and I see here a lot of similarities with circular 4.0. Mm -hmm. And over here, let's say, what are the differences be, uh, over here in circular 4.0 and also 
uh, what are yeah what are the differences between the standard uh, 14001 the environmental standard because over here i see that we are all talking about the energy uh, the lowering of costs uh, and, and so on and let's say what is what are the same things and what are the differences yes i must say i cannot uh, off the top of my heart completely answer uh, all the difference so i should uh, have to come back to, uh, to that for you maybe um, you can drop me a note uh, right uh, Giga, a very good question we will uh, take it and um, and discuss this uh, through, through the course in a more conceptual way uh, the the question that you raised is actually how do environmental standards relate to uh, the introduction and implementation of circular business models so uh, this is quite uh, quite an interesting uh, debate of course i am afraid we are limited with time so Giga, you uh, have uh, opened a pandora box and i promise we will uh, uh, dig into it and uh, discuss this through okay uh, um, uh, okay thank you yeah in um, in in short uh, standards can um, pinpoint uh, the uh, uh, the um, the ways the the operations the the, the processes and the outputs uh, or the use of inputs um, um, uh, that uh, we deploy in 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 our business models so the, it, there is definitely uh, a clear relation but they do not guarantee um, uh, a, 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 the the path to a more circular model as such so they are a, an extremely uh, important orientation um, uh, for that uh, but uh, uh, they do not provide the dynamic uh, transformational view on 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 your business so uh, this goes i think we can say this goes hand in hand and we can go a little bit deeper into this uh, in the next couple of sessions if you agree um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to um, invite you to, uh, to uh, the last part of our uh, today's meeting, which is uh, related to uh, the homework, um, the, the homework that we are going to, uh, to, to do. Um, uh, I would like you to um, uh, look uh, into the uh, uh, CAS, which is the uh, Security Assessment uh, Score. Um, uh, the the Security ass ac um, uh, Assessment that uh, you can um, use for a self-assessment. The purpose of this exercise is to uh, understand um, uh, what is your uh, current uh, business model, how it evolves in uh, practice, and how um, uh, uh, at what, at what uh, point you are before undertaking your experiment or your uh, 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 project uh, or your pilot uh, project. Um, we uh, stem from the fact that um, a firm can be considered circular whenever um, uh, this firm can contribute to a more circular economy, right? We are not um, aiming at uh, closing loops within our own organization. It's um, um, about evaluating um, the, the potential and the degree of uh, implementation of a business model that uh, enables the company to integrate into a circular economy. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's the idea uh, behind this uh, assessment. So there's a clear difference between measuring and assessing, right? Uh, uh, before I mentioned the circularity gap, this is measuring and we are trying to assess uh, the, uh, the, the capabilities of our company and also the actual performance at which uh, we are. Uh, we are doing this um, following two axes. There's a questionnaire uh, for you that you will be able to uh, fill in uh, for your company or your company of choice in, in case you, you, you would still like to do it, but you, do, uh, you, you participate rather as an observer in this uh, course. So the business model uh, potential will lead you through uh, the, the assessment of your business model potential will give you a partial score and uh, is dedicated to the assessment of uh, the model you're pursuing. Um, uh, with, with your uh, company, um, uh, how would you uh, ideally, you know, uh, uh, 
will fulfill your circular um, 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 aspirations. Um, then uh, the next set of questions is related to uh, the commitment to how much your organization uh, can um, fulfill uh, this ideal uh, already at uh, the present point uh, through the uh, corporate practices. This means uh, 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 budgeting, monitoring, controlling, uh, assigning resources and time to uh, circular activities um, and uh, so forth. So uh, the, the degree of monitoring and, uh, and uh, commitment to which um, uh, the, at, at which the company is uh, already uh, at, at the present uh, point. So uh, these are two uh, partial scores that uh, together make for a uh, full uh, circular assessment score and we are going to uh, go uh, into this. Uh, the, um, uh, the questionnaire is available through this uh, link uh, uh, at the, the Circular Business Academy uh, homepage and it's uh, quite uh, simple uh, to uh, fill it in. It will take, I believe, uh, less than uh, 20 minutes for, uh, to, to do it, but uh, please try to be as um, accurate as possible uh, whenever there are some ambiguities try to try to um, weigh uh, your uh, replies and uh, make some reasonable uh, assumptions whenever you don't have full information at hand uh, to um, uh, assess uh, your reply um, the, the 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 cast is also linked to this uh, uh, the digital maturity uh, both on the level of circular potential and uh, at uh, the level of um, the commitment to the circular uh, transformation. So one, some of the answers like, like uh, this one here uh, relate to, to questions um, about your degree of uh, di di digitalization. Uh, like, uh, does your organization trace the origin of material inputs or not, for example? Um, um, so related inputs, internal processes and output uh, uh, or um, the level of uh, applied uh, technologies and uh, maturity, uh, dig digitalization maturity as, uh, as such. Um, in the uh, forthcoming slides, I will show you some of the replies for a company that um, I have assessed. Uh, and it's a, a, a clear circular front runner um, uh, through which you can ob observe, you know, how the, the, their circularity um, uh, advanced uh, through uh, through uh, the course of development, and how um, uh, both dimensions of uh, circularity uh, have been um, um, uh, have been uh, improving. This is the potential as such, and the seizing of this potential or the, the commitment in, in in the organization. Uh, Aquafil is um, a group uh, seated in a town called Arco near uh, uh, Trento or the, uh, uh, on the northern shore of Lago di Garda. Behind that rock, there's uh, the largest uh, water reserve, natural water reserve on uh, the uh, southern side of the um, Alps. Uh, and as you see, the river flows into, into the lake just near uh, the, the seat of the company. So this position is quite, I would say, uh, quite uh, stimulating uh, for any um, industrial um, company to um, raise awareness and to, to keep a very high awareness of uh, their uh, uh, relation to uh, the uh, social and uh, the natural environment. Aquafield produces uh, nylon yarns and uh, uh, has been present on three continents in, 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 in eight uh, countries. Um, uh, I used uh, public information, um, but not to submit a sustainability report to assess uh, their circularity. Uh, the, uh, this uh, company is, uh, as, as I said, uh, one of the uh, front runners um, producing uh, yarn for textile flooring uh, for the apparel, and they also have a third uh, um, division, which is. Uh, which cons uh, uh, concerns the um, uh, regeneration of uh, uh, polymers um, and um, um, uh, has been uh, quite, quite, quite sizey, uh, 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 reaching um, more than a half a billion euro in uh, turnover. Uh, a part to sustainability uh, started quite early and it took 
10 years, uh, first 10 years, uh, mostly focused on uh, social sustainability issues and um, uh, uh, energy, energy transition to uh, renewable uh, sources. In 2011, Econil brand appears. Econil stands for uh, the regenerated nylon coming from uh, regenerated um, um, from, from old um, fishing nets, old carpets, old furniture, and other um, uh, uh, items considered waste, with the, which uh, Aquafil learned how to regenerate and uh, reproduce um, uh, nylon of equal quality out of that. But uh, today, uh, uh, secular activities um, uh, stretch uh, uh, over. Uh, so the, the process itself um, actually um, has been in, uh, uh, in integrated thing into the activities with their suppliers and uh, buyers. Uh, what means that they are rethinking product together with, uh, with their uh, buyers. Uh, they are um, sourcing in uh, all kinds of um, uh, nylon rich um, uh, products at the end of their lives and adapting their um, uh, value chain uh, in uh, the early uh, stages. And they uh, co-design uh, products like uh, this example with Natai Piri um, and uh, a circular uh, a jacket produced out of the regenerated uh, nylon. Um, on uh, the side, they, there, are, there are unprecedented examples of uh, cross-sectorial collaboration, like in the case of the, the Slovenian uh, plant in uh, Ljubljana, which um, uh, created uh, cooperation with a nearby um, uh, swimming uh, pool. Um, the heated water that was uh, sourced from the nearby river and um, it was used and is still used for the uh, cooling of their boilers uh, was um, streamed to, towards the uh, uh, water park uh, where it was uh, then used uh, to, uh, for the heating of the water in the pools before running back into the uh, river. So it was definitely a positive um, environmental effect, but also a, a huge uh, energy um, uh, saving and uh, also economically a, a very a viable project. The next uh, cross sectorial uh, example is uh, a year long program uh, of um, engagement program uh, uh, related to their suppliers, uh, which um, uh, somehow uh, encouraged them and, and uh, provided incentives, but also uh, uh, KPIs for their own strategies to become uh, more circular, which uh, became in a software some kind of conditions to to fulfill uh, their the criteria to continue uh, their long term uh, relationships. Uh, so uh, I started to assess uh, Aquafil, as you see, and I uh, first uh, um, take uh, the answer no to the question whether I'm the responsible person. No, I can also assess. An, an external organization to this, of course, acknowledging that I'm not uh, an insider. And I um, uh, tried to, uh, of course, uh, collect all the information possible from um, our, our external sources, which was just uh, fine. And um, uh, next, uh, uh, I uh, tried to make some reasonable assumptions uh, to uh, questions related to the um, uh, a business model uh, uh, potential, like, uh, for example, um, acquiring material inputs, uh, where I, I understand that there's a significant quantity, the, uh, more than 40%, but not more than 70% that has been converted to uh, an island regeneration and not the acquisition from primary sources. This means from the petrochemical um, uh, industry, for example. Um, uh, in some answers, I recognize the phenomena that I have pointed out, like a year-long uh, program with buyers and with suppliers. Um, um, but uh, of course, I had to uh, also uh, recognize that uh, in some cases that um, some of the um, in, uh, in incentives or uh, initiatives were at a high level, but not at the let's say at the predominant level of its uh, op operations. So um, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, commitment, um, again, I try to uh, follow uh, publicly uh, uh, available information. 
um, for example, does the technology that supports the core business model allow the production process to be adapted to certain principles or not? I believe yes to quite some degree, but uh, it, it, it's quite a year long uh, transformation of processes in several plants. So we cannot uh, recognize that it's you know predominant or completely um, circular at this uh, point and, and so forth. So uh, here are some, uh, uh, here's a, a complete example of how such a question can be uh, filled in. And I'm encouraging you to do this for your own organization. Um, uh, or for an, an, an organization of your uh, choice. Um, at, the, at the very end, you, you uh, will also, in the third party, will also uh, be able to choose what is the predominant business model you know, among the three that Christian also uh, carefully described, uh, gave a number of uh, examples for. Uh, what are the primary drivers? Uh, uh, I take two, there could be more than one. Uh, don't forget to reconfirm your email and you will get a cast report um, uh, uh, which will give you a first indication of your uh, circularity. From then on, the next time we will uh, discuss uh, how to prepare for um, the uh, project and uh, what, would, what could be your uh, project uh, focus and how to, uh, to tackle the, the next uh, steps. Um, the, the results, of course, uh, are uh, can be compared with, with others. The, 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 this is a, the cost metric uh, in comparison to um, several other cases already developed. As we can see, uh, there is an uh, unexplored territory. So we are quite early in the, in, in the um, circle transformation and not so many companies have reached the very top uh, positions. Definitely there's um, a correlation between those who are going uh, circular, they they have they at the same time increase their potential and their their commitment. So uh, it's it's expected that uh, there is quite some um, some um, uh, correlation between the two axes, um, and uh, also some you know one, about a quarter of uh, of cases uh, are are front runners. This is quite uh, uh, quite similar to the. Uh, Slovenian Development Bank that uh, first used a more comprehensive uh, alternative of, of, of this uh, CAS model. Uh, so Aquafil uh, score is, um, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, uh, Aquafil score is actually 81, so it's quite, quite high and it just breaks, you know, this untapped territory uh, here on, 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 on this slide. In, um, so uh, you are um, uh, invited to, um, fill in uh, the costs uh, yourselves and um, uh, find, find this uh, link. And then of course, um, uh, you will receive your, your uh, initial assessment, uh, which will uh, allow us uh, to uh, proceed. And uh, we will start the next session with a comprehensive feedback on your um, um, overall uh, results. Uh, thank you very much for your attention uh, today. Uh, we are meeting in a, a week time and uh, I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for uh, your uh, attention uh, to uh, this first part of your course. Are there any questions? Any questions at this point? Any, uh, if uh, at any point in time you uh, feel like you, you need some guidance, don't hesitate to um, write an email and we will try to uh, help you out. Um, uh, being uh, qu questions related to you know, the use of the platform uh, or any, any um, uh, other issues. Uh, also, I would like to, um, to encourage you to think of, of your uh, experimentation area or your pilot project. I think there was quite a quite an uh, interesting debate with Christian and there were very uh, useful uh, hints uh, that um, he could provide. So um, we will send you um, another email to remind you that uh, by the next time you should decide whether you know you, you will work on, on an existing project. I mean, even if it's just, you know, uh, something uh, very early in, in, in a very early stage or will you uh, decide to actually um, 
uh, scout for the right opportunity within your organization so that we will provide uh, the, the, the right uh, leads uh, for each of the groups uh, from the next time onwards. And um, so these are the two things to do. Uh, filling in your uh, cast for your organization or your organization of choice and uh, deciding in which group you will uh, will continue uh, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to meeting you all the next time. Um, any conclusive comment for today? Uh, if uh, we are, uh, if everything was clear at this point, I can like I think, ask? Yeah, Vesna, please. So I did. Uh, I used the cast today on a, a children company. Yes. And uh, we went with a company owner. We went together through. Oh, yes. um, or I, I actually noticed it was uh, quite a bias. So especially I, my impression was if I am with a company, uh, with a company owner together and filling in, I felt like uh, the results were quite uh, biased, especially for the questions when you have to choose like at least 40%. And then if the company had 20% of something, for, for example, secondary material, mm -hmm. they, they, they like to, to move towards 40 and they would choose. So yeah, this kind of things um, I noticed, but my question is I, after submission, uh, this will go in hands of you and we get a report after. Yeah, every um, result is examined uh, by a, a group of experts and uh, every report uh, made is, is double checked. Of course, there is an automated way to produce uh, the score, but then we double check uh, the, the company and, and uh, we, we, uh, every time we check the relevance of the results. So, so far, we didn't have any, any, any um, let's say, um, unexpected outcomes. Uh, but we still do this and we, we, we also uh, complete the writing of the report um, among uh, the expert uh, group. So that's why you haven't received the, the report if you have filled it in uh, yesterday or, or, or this morning. But normally we reply within 24 to uh, 48 hours. So uh, this, this is going to happen also this time. And as you are also a part of the OTC, you are not obliged to do it twice, of course. Okay. Um, I understand yeah, so the I bias think... question. I understand that it's tempting, you know, to look better, but you have to be honest. You have to make honest assumptions about uh, about yourself. And these uh, yes, yes. Uh, these uh, intervals are not made by by just by 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 chance. You know? Yeah. So I believe so. It was a. I. It was not the decisions that I made, but uh, we went together with the the. Mm -hmm. the um, company's owner. So I I think it would be great to have some sort of a session to just provide some feedbacks on the yeah. tool and Absolutely. our experience. Absolutely. Uh, we, we will take this into account very well. Uh, with, with pleasure. Um, we will provide a group uh, uh, feedback at the beginning of the next session. And from there, we can also uh, proceed uh, one, one on one. If there, the, this is not planned within the the cut 4.0, but we can we can uh, perhaps arrange uh, this uh, outside the course. Yes. Any other question? Thank you again. I'm looking forward to meeting you in a week time. Have a nice evening. <laughs>